All right, howdy folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to We The People. I had a chance to check out the demo, which actually has just released on Steam. And the idea for the game is to deliver a mix of DayZ and Escape from Tarkov. Today, we're looking at what you can expect from the demo as well as from the game going into the future. You can find a link to the demo page in the description as well. An early access release for the game is planned for later this year at a price of about $20. Now, the game is set in the post-apocalypse Pacific Northwest in the year 2028. Besides AI controlled human enemies, you'll also have to survive encounters with other players, wildlife, and zombies. This demo is really more of a proof of concept than anything. You can explore a very, very small part of the game world, shoot some zombies, and mostly just mess around with the weapon customization, but we'll definitely come back to that a little bit later on in the video. The idea for the game is that similar to Tarkov, you'll join a lobby, but in we to people, these can range from anywhere from about 20 to 100 players, though I assume that initially they'll have smaller lobbies as they work on the game and progress to eventually have these huge servers or maps, allowing you to be in a server with potentially 99 other players. Now, unlike Tarkov lobbies that last, say, about 20 to 50 minutes, We to People lobbies will be much, much longer, up to 12 real-time hours being a possibility, according to a developer. The idea is that throughout these 12 hours, Hours, the session goes on, players who are killed will be replaced by new players. So something you hear in Tarkov where somebody quote, wiped the lobby, won't be something that can really happen in We The People. Instead, a server will always be populated with players until it closes. You select your loadout and gear before you jump into a session, where similar to Tarkov, if you die, you will lose all the stuff you brought in. The customization system is something the developers were really excited to show off, and that's why in the demo, with just the M4 available, there are over a million different combinations to set up your gun. You can change the barrel length, muzzle attachments, handguard, sights, large scopes, lasers, stock, and more. And this can actually all be done on the fly, depending on what you have in your inventory. Though in the demo, a lot of it is unlocked for you to just kind of check out and mess around with. I do want to mention the gradual zooming on the voodoo scope, for example, and isn't just locked to how to have it in Tarkov, a one or a six time zoom, but allows you to use intermediate levels of zoom as well between one and six times. When you're done with your session and you want to leave, you have to find a certain extraction area on the map. Some of these will just require you to enter them and can be very easily found, though others will be hidden or can be blocked by AI, or you might require a certain set of items like a keycard or keys to actually get out. When you're not actively in the game, you'll be in the game's save zone, sort of a division style zone where you can talk or trade with players, find quest givers, and more. The developers want to be respectful with your time and are trying to eliminate waiting and loading screens as much as possible by focusing on seamless transitions wherever possible. The devs of the game are trying to create something similar to what the Tarkov devs are working on right now called Arena. However, it's going to be a part of We The People and not its own game like Tarkov devs are doing. The goal of the We The People developers with their arena mode is to create a mode where you can just either play to hone your PvP skills without losing any of the gear you bring in, or if so inclined, you could stake your gear and lose it all if you lose in the arena. Now, whether this is in a 1v1 setting or with larger clan versus clan battles, I just really like the sound of that. A quote from one of the developers is here about the arena mode. Our intention is to make these things provide some level of distinguishable pride as opposed to going through an in-game store to look cool. Microtransactions are lame, but going in and grinding out a high rank in arena play and earning something unique and badass is super fulfilling." End quote. The demo is just a very, very first early look at what the developers of We The People have been working on. For example, you can swim in this tiny lake in the demo, and the developers also talked to me about how you can determine how long a zombie, or in the future a human, has been dead. A your level of decay. I do want to quickly dive deeper into the decay system, and though it's been heavily sped up in this demo, according to the developers, a seasoned player will be able to determine how long a player, AI, or zombie body has been dead based on the state of decay of the body. Now, seeing as there might be close to a hundred other players in the same server as you, as well as a whole bunch of AI, animals, zombies, or maybe just armed bandits, I'm not really sure if it'll ever 
be safe enough for you to really play Inspector Gadget and inspect bodies for an extended amount of time, but it's still a very interesting feature nonetheless. At first glance, I think Witted People has promise. I'm not going to sit here and say that this game is going to dethrone Tarkov or DayZ right away, or maybe ever, but 20 bucks isn't a ton of money, and I can't say the developers do sound like they are full of willpower to make this game happen. That just definitely came across while talking to them. I personally am going to keep my eye on this game and look forward to any sort of multiplayer test that they're going to be hosting. For now, I'd like to see what you think about the game. Let me know down in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.